Hi everyone, this is Dr. Santos. Today, I'll be talking about the organization of DNA. So, you know, generally DNA is not like this. Like, it is not free inside cell. Like this. It is folded in the protein. But why do we require to fold the DNA? And you know, this DNA is a very long molecule. If you see, in one cell, the breadth of this DNA molecule is, width of this DNA molecule or diameter of this DNA molecule is 2 nanometer. But when you see length wise this DNA, and you, you know the length between, the distance between two bases are 0.34 nanometer or 0.34 into 10 to the power minus 9 meter. And this if you multiply with the number of total bases that is present in the whole human genome. In whole human genome, you know, the number of bases present is 6 into 10 to the power 9, 9. That means in one haploid genome, we have 3 billion bases and diploid genome, we have 6 billion. So when you multiply this uh, whole, the distance between two bases with the number of bases, what you get is, is 2 meter. This 2 meter of whole DNA has to fit into the 10 micro micron of a nucleus. Nucleus has a 10 micrometer diameter. So it, it will have to fit in. So for that matter, this whole nucleus has to fit, has to fold into very compact structure. So for that matter, folding is very important. Now for folding, you can read here the half of the molecular mass, half of the molecular can see the half of the molecular mass of eukaryotic chromosome is protein. You can understand the half, the DNA, if you measure the DNA weight, is half protein. So we need to know about certain protein that is required in folding and that is very, very important. Now histone is a very important protein. We need to know about histone protein that is required to hold this whole DNA. Now, before going further going, let's see why do we need this DNA to be folded. Let's see here. So you can see in this slide there are four causes. They are given four causes for the folding of DNA. When you see this cause, you already know the big DNA molecule, the 2 meter DNA molecule has to fit into 10 micrometer of diameter of nucleus. Nucleus. Okay, now this, this is why the cell has to, this DNA has to fold. This is one reason, okay. But for our purpose, for understanding purpose of the whole gene genetics, this is the most important point. So you need to understand folding stabilizes the DNA. That protects DNA from damage. Now, DNA, you know, there are two mechanisms that protects DNA from damage. One mechanism is folding. The protein, histone protein and other non-histone protein that are utilized to fold, this folding plus DNA repair mechanism. This three, two mechanism that protects DNA inside our body to having, to uh, protects our DNA from in injury. Now, let's see why DNA is not that very stable molecule. You can, if you read here, completely naked DNA molecule are relatively unstable in cell. And this is the reason, you know, during DNA replication, when DNA completely unfolds, that time there is high chance that DNA will break into two. There are double strand break in the DNA and thanks to the mechanism of double strand break repair mechanism we have we our body is able to repair those DNA damaged DNA and we don't experience any damage and if it is not repaired the cell will die, die through apoptosis okay this is the mechanism this is the reason DNA has to be folded DNA is folded for stability and why unfolded DNA is very unstable the question is how why unfolded DNA is very stable the answer is DNA is a macromolecule and it is anabolic molecule. Anabolic molecule. And it contains very high amount of energy. You can imagine, you can see that during replication, when you C 
seed replication process there you can find the substrate what substrate is required substrate required is d a t p d a g t p d t t p d c t p these are the molecules that are added here so very high amount of energy is required to drive the whole dna synthesis and that dna contains high amount of energy and this high energy molecule tries to be stabilized anyway so this how it becomes stabilized by breaking down into smaller pieces so this dna any molecule that has high energy content are thermodynamically unstable molecules so dna is very unstable molecule in that sense and so we need to stabilize this dna and this point is very very important for us to understand genetics that is the reason for dna is folded and dna has to be folded if dna is not used it has to be folded let's say some dna in some cell muscle cell there are set of dna that is utilized and there are other set of dna that are not utilized so those set of dna that will be folded in compact way we call them heterochromatin heterochromatin those dna which are folded unfolded we call them euchromatic only dna which are required for the cell is unfolded so this is the region why dna is folded now let's let's see that now when dna is folded it is very stable and it can fit in cell now the dna can be transmitted to next generation without any damage and then it also regulates accessibility of the dna so when folding no excess when there is less folding the excess to dna for transcription okay so that so the dna which is not required for the cell that is that are made inaccessible to prevent damage to those dna so this is the this is the re, these are the reasons why dna are folded and for folding you have to remember simple concept that it requires lots and lots of proteins the main protein is histone now let's focus here on the histone here now you can see when dna it folds the first stage of folding is the 2 nanometer molecule will convert into 10 nanometer and this molecule is called beads on string what is this bead you can see the garland you can see beaded garland garland you can see this the molecule is like beaded garland like this bead this bead this bead so there is thread going on through this bead so this is bead on string so this is a bead is a protein on that protein the chromosome is wrapped the dna is wrapped like this dna is wrapped like this so this is the first level of folding and this folding the diameter of this structure is 10 nanometer and this is a very important protein called histone protein this histone protein we will talk in detail about this histone protein but now i'll tell you this histone protein is made up of octamer two molecules of h2a two molecules of h2b two molecules of h3 and two molecules of h4 so this molecule will be there eight molecules of this histone will be h2 h2 h2a h2b h3 h4 will be there in histone octamer this is a very important structure in gene regulation okay transcriptional control and folding of protein the protein which is the dna which is not required for transcription will be folded dna which is not required in cell will be folded on this protein this protein will help that clump that dna into a heterochromatic so this protein is very very important for our exams and for understanding of genetics also now this 10 nanometer structure will organize into 30 nanometer structure now you can see this is the structure this will fold like this this helical structure here bead bead all beads are present here and then this structure helical structure of this 30 nanometer that is made from 10 nanometer actually the linker this is linked by h1 dn h1 this histone protein h1 histone protein is very very important for forming this structure and these are this is the structure this is the main structure that is present in interphage nucleus you can say this is are this these are the chromatin fiber that we see in interphage chromosome now you can see here this fiber here the in, if you see the interphage 
DNA, the interface DNA will look like this. This is like pasta in plate. So in con it, it looks like pasta in plate. So this DNA are this solen solenoid DNA when they are in spirally folded. And here H1 histone, these histones are H1 histone, they will help in folding. Now, this is the DNA that is present in interface. And this DNA somewhere it will be more compacted because when DNA is not required, it will be more compacted to protect that DNA and limit the accessibility of that DNA from transcriptional machinery because it is not required for that cell. This is how, so this is the DNA that is present in the normal interface nucleus. Okay, now for division of cell, what do we require? For division of cell, we don't require that DNA to produce any protein before division. So we only want that DNA has to be, you know, the DNA has to be transmitted in the offspring in equal quantity. And this DNA will should not contribute to the any protein synthesis. So this DNA will compact more. And this compacted DNA will form this chromosome, whole chromosome made up of two chromatin. Now this is a very stable DNA molecule and a molecule that can easily be separated into two with a very with without any injury. So this chromosome is a very compacted form of this chromatin. Now chromatin, you can see this will fold. It will fold very highly. It will highly fold on itself, and it will utilize some other type of protein called non-histone protein, and other type of proteins it will require to fold it. And now you can, if you compare this DNA. And comparison to this chromosome so this DNA is 10,000 times folded here in chromosome and this crop DNA is very very stable very very inaccessible to any transcriptional machinery so if molecular or molecularly this whole DNA is molecular heterochromatin that no transcription machinery can access DNA so this is highly compacted DNA that is present in metaphase chromosome metaphase chromosome now let's see a little bit about this non-histone protein. So we have already done histone protein and we'll see we'll see a little bit about non-histone protein. Non-histone protein, first we'll see this is the protein that is present at the centromere and then other proteins there. These proteins, the non-histone protein, the major part of there are other proteins, but main proteins they are called structural maintenance of chromosome. So proteins that maintains the, that form the compaction of DNA and form the structure of uh, the transform that whole chromatin into chromosome. So that is why this protein is called structural maintenance of chromosome proteins. So these are two types, two types of protein you, you need to know here to understand the whole thing. So first is cohesin. These proteins are there in chrome associated with chromosome only, not with chromatin. It is there for cell division. So you can see cohesin protein. You can also find here the cohesin protein before cell division, the cohesin protein, they link this to DNA at centromere. Okay, these are the protein. So now, they are, they are nothing but they are alpha helical structure, coiled, coiled alpha helical structure. They are joined together and this is how they tie this two DNA together. Now, before cell division that are in a, during anaphase condition, there will be some proteases that will break this, this protein here that will break this protein and then it will help separation of these two chromosome from each other. So this cohesion protein will be there in the centromere. Attach the centromere protein. Now condensin protein is there. It is present elsewhere here. I'll you can see condensin proteins present other places. So the uh, condensing protein is also grouped into the same, they, they, they have also the similar type of structure, okay, similar type of structure and that will hold the other DNA in compacted form, in chromosomal form. So these two protein, non-histone protein is very important in folding the chromatin into chromosome. So thank you very much. In next class, we'll talk about heterochromatin, significance of heterochromatin. Thank you. I hope this lecture helped you a lot. Thank you. See you in next class.